Hi, I'm Kim Cooper, the owner of Creative K Concepts, and today I'd like to show you an easy tutorial on how to use candy melts to make cupcake toppers, and this will be a holiday theme. Now, the supplies we're going to use were all given to us by my friends at cakesuppliesonsale.com. And here's what you're going to need. You're going to need candy melts. Now, I'm using Merkins wafers in red, super white, and green. You're also going to need pastry bags and couplers and metal tips. Now, I'm using a size number three and a size number five. You're also going to need some parchment paper for your work surface, as well as I have put under a piece of craft foam. And the craft foam helps my um, work surface not cool the candy melts too quickly. And you'll see why in a minute. You're also going to need a variety of um, cookie cutters. I've got an ornament cutter, a reindeer, and then just a couple of circle cutters. You're also going to need some toothpicks or a small skewer. So I have already warmed up my three colors of Merkins wafers. They're in my pastry bag. I've used a little chip clip to help me hold the bag and help the candy melts not squeeze out the other end. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pipe lines and then we're going to drag the skewers through one way and then the other direction. And what's that is going to do, it's going to do some drag marks through our colors and make this neat pattern. Now, one of the things you might find too is that once you do this, check the back side. Some of the ones that I've done, I actually like the back side a little bit better. And that's what you see here on these round ones. All right, so it's very simple. All you're going to do is pipe some alternating lines. And you want to make sure that this is wide enough to accommodate your cutter. So I'm just going to do some lines alternating in here. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to come in. And you notice that I have these in a bowl with a dish towel to help keep them warm. So come in with the green, make a little bit of a thicker line. There is no real rule here how wide your lines need to be. Just try and keep them, there's a little air bubble, try and keep them about the same thickness. Okay, done with the green. I'm going to come in with the, the white. And I see I've got some space in there, so it's a little wider than where the red was, but it will all work out. Go back in and fill. If your space is cool, you do want to work a little quickly so that your candy melts don't harden up on you. So then what you're going to do is take your parchment paper, tap it, and you're going to see how your candy melts, the lines, are kind of blending together without any air bubbles. Now then again, also working quickly, grab your toothpick and just come in and pull in some shallow lines. And you're going to want some paper towel. Go one direction, come back the other. Make sure that when you're pulling these, you don't go all the way down to that parchment because it's going to wind up cutting through the candy melts. You see some pretty pattern is starting to happen here. Maybe we get one more. So. There you go. I've got this lovely pattern here. So what I want to do, again, is tap this, because I want to make sure that these grooves aren't all the way down to the paper, that there's going to be candy melt there, so that when I cut something out of it, it's not going to crack in the middle. So then you can just find your cutter that would fit. Now there, I'm going to be a little too tight. I'm not going to be able to get the reindeer's legs. 
This one would work, but I think the round would work really well because I can capture some of that design right in the middle. So you're going to go ahead and just pop that down in there. Don't twist it at this point because you'll start to pull that pattern. So then what we're going to do is take that craft foam out. Now what this is going to do is going to, now that it's on a cool surface, these candy melts are going to start to set up. And you just want to make sure that before you try and remove your cutters or the design, that everything has solidified so that you don't pull it up and it all falls apart. So you got to set this aside and make sure it's cool. Now, you notice that there are some other little things that you can do. This is just a little freeform filigree tree. You can print out outlines or designs. This is one I just took multiple little upside down hearts and stacked them together to look like a tree. You can put that underneath your parchment Take your candy melt and start, let's do this smaller one. And in something like this, you also can move to a much smaller tip if you want a very fine detail. And all you do is go in and you make heart after heart and they kind of interlock in there. You could also take, um, yellow and pipe a star at the very top of your tree. Then you can also go in with some gold dust, luster dust, and put a little gold onto that tree. Just make sure that whatever designs you pipe, they all have joins so that when they harden and you lift them up off of the parchment, they all interconnect. You don't have put all this work into it and then have your design fall apart. So you can do little stylized Christmas trees. Um, you can also take your cutter, put it on a piece of paper, draw the outline, and then go back in and just do random curly cues to fill in the design. You could also make flowers. Poinsettias are very popular this time of year. So I talked about this little tree. Why don't we do this little stylized one? Could go in, squeeze. You got a little tail there, just twist it around so it lets go. And just put little dots. All right. So let's check these. Just saying. They are starting to set up. Now with these, but the round ones you can kind of wiggle a little bit. Now these are really nicely set up. So I'm going to now break off this extra candy melt using an offset spatula. I just come in and see if it is ready. It really should snap. It still feels as if this is a little too cool to come off. Now, with this extra candy melt, you can melt it, make it into another color, um, but it is really not going to be useful for much, as is. Okay, we're going to have to have a couple more minutes. So, I'm going to see how we are with these, if we're cool enough now. Yes, now I'm able to slide that under. So I'm going to break in between these, take this, I'm going to really push down to make sure that the candy melt break on the outside of the cutter. And if you're planning these for a set of cupcakes, make sure that you make multiples because you will have breakage. So rather that you make a couple in advance and a couple of extra. So now you can see in that cutter, I like to clean up the edges once I pick it up. And see that's kind of an interesting pattern there, but inside we have that 
swirl pattern. Very carefully going around the inside, you're just going to push down to get that to release. And if we're lucky, we won't have that break. So, there's one. Let's see if we can get the second one to release. Okay, it's free underneath. You can use your offset spatula just to help break off that extra. Get all this out of the way. Like so. And then very carefully, all the way around the inside, push down until it releases. Don't rush it because that's how they get broken. All right. So there you have two interesting Christmas balls. And one of the things you can check is the back side. This has a couple of different bits of color. So these, I think, it worked out lovely. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with these. Um, you can then take these, place them on your cupcakes, and you have some really interesting special cupcakes to take to your holiday parties. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you give this a try.